Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and today I wanted to talk about protecting your crops over winter. So a lot of stuff doesn't need much protection. So, you know, all of your main brassicas, your sprouts, your collets, your cabbages, things like that. Uh, depending on how mature they are, if they're pretty mature now, they're not going to need uh, much protection and they're going to grow over, over winter pretty well. Um, that's the same with beetroot can be left in the ground. Uh, I've certainly left mine in the ground until uh, late in December, although I will pick my main crop um, and pop, pop, pop it in my storeroom. Um, and what else have I got outside? Yeah, so we'll have obviously onions, garlic uh, and elephant garlic and those sorts of things. They can all uh, go outside, no problem at all. But when it comes to your spinach and your salad rocket and your lettuces and your radishes, um, basically the salad things that you might use in a salad or stir fry greens and things like that uh, they do benefit from some protection and that's a big part of our diet we typically have a salad every day 365 days a year I actually have mine for my supper um, and for smoothie every day as well so two of our meals are in that category really of foods that benefit from some protection. Even chard here really does benefit. I mean, it'll survive just about over winter, but the leaves are generally not uh, good eating quality um, from sort of mid-December through to sort of mid-February, maybe even March time, without a little bit of protection. Even things that you might think like miner's lettuce and corn salad which you know they're pretty much indestructible actually benefit from a little bit of protection so i'm going to go through um the different types of protection that i use and i'll start with the polytunnel let me know at the moment because that's kind of my opinion it's kind of the top um protection system available um and i'll go all the way down to the cheapest stuff that you might even think of using even in winter uh, I certainly didn't until I noticed the benefits. So let's start with the polytunnel. Well, you know, a greenhouse is fantastic. A greenhouse is slightly warmer than a polytunnel. Glass is thicker, obviously, than polythene. In fact, it's important to remember, really, that a polytunnel can actually be colder than outside. And that's because if there's wind outside, there's energy in the air. Uh, energy is temperature, effectively. Um, and so the... Um, the outside air that's moving is warmer than the inside, the air inside the polytunnel, which is static. Having said that, there are two important things to remember about that. The first one is that it's you know plants that are exposed to freezing rain and high winds and low temperatures, sort of thing. You know that kind of combination. Is just really not great for salads uh, and they just you know the leaves will just not you know the plants might survive some of them but the leaves just won't be of eating quality and the plants won't grow very well so it's not just about temperature and um, the other thing is it's really easy to protect things further with an extra layer of protection uh, in the polytunnel now you know generally speaking what I, we're trying to do is heat the ground up in the polytunnel and to some extent the air, but mostly the ground up in the polytunnel, so the black soil. Um, and in my case, the, um, the black path. So I want all that nice and warm uh, during the day. And then if it's going to be really cold at night, there's going to be a hard frost, I will lay down fleece in the polytunnel over the beds. And that will trap that air, that warm air um, that's being warmed by the soil and it'll trap the heat in the soil um, and obviously the plant roots and everything are in the soil so it just, it's just like a nice warm blanket. Now when I've got potatoes in here and I pretty much will have potatoes in here all the way through winter um, because I'll have my quote Christmas potatoes in here in sort of November December time when there's a risk of frost and then I'll have my super early potatoes in here 
in you know probably mid to late February uh, and March and April when there's another risk you know still risk of frost. Um, I will even use a fleece blanket not not that super thin tiny fleece that lets the light through but an actual fleece uh, blanket that you might use on your bed. Uh, they're still fairly light to weight there's no problem uh, with the leaves supporting those and at night that just gives them that extra protection in the polyton. So I, I really like that combination you know that in the polyton during the day you can trap a lot of heat you can warm up the ground you can still have a lot of ventilation going on though in the polyton light. In my polyton I've got doors at both ends, so I've got a nice cross breeze. I can have the door open just as slowly like that uh, on the wind side and then fully open on the, um, I don't know what it's called, the, the, the opposite side anyway to the uh, way the wind's blowing. Um, and so I get a nice cross breeze, but it's still really lovely and warm in here. You know, it can easily be 70 or 80 degrees in the heart of winter. Um, so that's generally my strategy and then what I have is I have a fleece which I leave permanently installed on the north side of the polytunnel uh, and I just have it rolled up and then as soon as I need it I just unroll it and, and drape it over and it's super easy I mean it literally only takes about a minute to put the fleece down um, at night and then kind of another minute to take it up again the next day if I need to I mean if it's going to be really cold I'll probably just leave it down because it doesn't matter leaving it down just for a few days so that's the polytunnel so in the what will I grow in the polytunnel well I'll grow a lot of things like radishes um, actually let me just step back a little bit so I've got two beds in the polytunnel one of those beds I generally don't fleece unless it's going to be really bad because uh, it's slightly more difficult because it's under this trestle table that I've got. Um, I'll throw some pictures in as I'm talking, I think. Um, and so that bed is a little bit more difficult to fleece because you've got to fleece each individual section as you go along. And you know, it's not it's not super quick. It probably takes two or three minutes to do it. Um, so in that bed, mostly I'm going to have Grenoble red lettuce because it's the hardiest lettuce that I grow, and I absolutely love it. So it's that perfect combination of hardiness and taste and texture. So that love going over red because it does, you know, it just survives. It's brilliant, and it also does quite well in the shade underneath the trestle table. And that's because the light is coming in through the side of the polytunnel rather than through the top from the top of the polytunnel in winter. Um, in the other bed, which is bigger, I'll have two things. I'll have small brassicas. Uh, and so th those are mostly going to be uh, little cl clumps of sprouts grown for the leaves because we really like tender little young sprout leaves. Um, curly kales, uh, red boar and reflex. Um, so that's a red curly kale and a green curly kale. Uh, Carvalho Nero or Black Magic, um, both basically look the same. One's just slightly darker than the other. Um, and all of those are little plants at the moment um, and or actually some of them are about that big um, and so they're going to grow through winter as really nice tender plants and they're actually going to survive all the way through until May giving me nice kales. My experience out here is that kale outside uh, does, it's not very good uh, after about sort of um, the middle of December you, you know we don't get very many leaves uh, and that does depend on how many pests and how much white flying cabbage, cabbage aphid and all that sort of thing we've had how bad the wind is and all like that um, but it's not the most reliable crop so it's really nice to have some in here uh, so yeah all those brassicas and I might even have some little clumps of uh, calabrese in there not to be grown for the heads again just some calabrese leaves are really lovely and succulent and the ones outside, again, they're getting a bit tough uh, in the heart of winter, but the ones in the polytunnel with all that protection, just lovely and tender still. Obviously the younger plants. So that's the brassicas. So it'll be a big, nice big bed of brassicas. Uh, and the other advantage of that is that it means if it's howling a gale or, you know, snowing or hailing or whatever outside, I can just pop in the polytunnel and pick stuff. Uh, and I don't need to, uh, you know, get to get soaking wet and freezing cold. Uh, the other big bed will be full of carrots and salad crops so that will be um, 
salad onions, spring onions, whatever you want to call them. It's not kind of appropriate really to call them uh, spring onions because I grow them every week of the year. Um, uh, yeah, so salad onions, bunching onions, whatever you want to call them. Um, lots of lettuces, but I'm going to grow not Grenoble red because that bed's so easy to protect with fleece. It's nice to have a few other varieties of lettuce, so I'm going to have Bijou, I'm going to have Roxy, I'm going to have, um, come on, come on, come on, Winter Density and Navara. So a nice range uh, of darker, most of those are darker coloured, so the kind of bronze or red uh, lettuces and just add a nice different bit of texture uh, and, and um, colour to the mixes. Winter density isn't uh, is, is green, um, and to be honest, I've not had massive success with growing winter density. But I thought I'd give it one more try because I really like a crunchy green leaf in my salad mixes, and I've struggled and struggled to find a good, you know, true crunchy um, leaf that I can grow over winter. So if anybody's got any tips on that, that'd be great. So and then radishes and salad rocket and lots and lots of brassicas which are planted in September and October which will overwinter in the polytunnel well not totally overwinter because I'll probably start planting them out in February and definitely in February so they are still actually getting planted out in February but they'll still be planted out under cover in cold frames um, and then they'll grow on strongly and that gives me nice succession so although they've all been planted in September and October they'll actually come ready over two or three months because some of them will go into cold frame some of them might even get planted in the polytunnel um, and lots of them will get planted outside so I get a, a really nice succession of cabbages whole range of different cabbages um, and uh, cauliflowers and calabrese and Romanesco cauliflowers. So those are all the things that I tend to overwinter because it's really nice to have that extra range of veg kind of kicking in um, in the hungry gap. And so it gives us a really big, uh, fantastic range uh, at that time. So that I think is the polytunnel talked about. So what's the sort of second next best thing apart from a greenhouse? I don't have a greenhouse. But obviously, pretty much everything I've said about a polytunnel is also true of a greenhouse. It's just a greenhouse is a lot more expensive. Um, I actually, the other thing is I quite like about the polytunnel is you can't, it's a diffusion of the light. Um, so, you know, a light beam kind of comes in and gets diffused uh, um, into lots of different directions. And so you get quite an even distribution of light in a polytunnel, so you don't get sort of shady spots and bright spots as much as you do in a greenhouse. At least that's my theory. Next thing is my little low tunnels, and they are really good. I'm very, very happy with those. Um, I have the backs of them uh, in the sort of facing the normal wind direction, which is kind of north and northwest and um, here. Um, obviously it comes from everywhere but you know that's the worst in winter generally is is that um, and so the wind hits the back of them which means I can have the front of them vented a little bit um, and so that works really nicely because um, I really you know I'm a big fan of ventilation in winter um, get a lot of damping off kind of you know stems rotting and things like that if you don't get enough uh, and you can get that mildew on the leaves of the salad crops and you know it's just yeah it's not good so um yeah so whenever you can vent and that comes back to this thing it's not so much about the cold it's about the rain and the wind so if you can protect from the rain and the wind and provide some little bit of ventilation which is kind of you know so a little bit of wind not a lot of wind um then you know, you, the plants will often bear the cold. Obviously, you don't if it's going to be minus five or something like that, close them. But if it's just going to be a light frost, or you're not sure whether it's going to be a frost or something, probably leave them open, no problem. Um, so in those low tunnels, I tend to put spinach. Spinach really likes that environment, and I can keep on harvesting spinach for quite a while. Uh, and you know, and I'm starting to harvest again towards the end of February. 
uh, and getting a really nice abundant crop of spinach by then. So that is, is really nice. Uh, carrots quite like it in there as well. So an early crop of carrots uh, does well. Uh, early crops of radish, again, all of those sorts of things do well in there. Um, they get warmer than the cold frames, which we'll come on to in a minute. Uh, so that's really great. Now the polythene, the downside to the polythene, and obviously to a poly, the big polytunnel, is you do have to water them. You know, there's no water going to go through. But mine all open up on hinges. And so if there's going to be a day, actually like today, uh, where it's not very much wind, nice drizzly rain, not too cold, then I will open them up uh, and just, you know, prop them up and so they get a nice rain on. So I don't have to water uh, with a watering can all the time. It's just looking for every couple of weeks really is uh, a good day when you can just open them up for two or three hours, get, get a nice little bit of rain. It's even better if it's going to be sunny later on or something like that because then the leaves dry out. Um, so yeah, little hoop tunnels, really great. Um, and say so the polythene provides fantastic protection and because you know, they're, they're big, there's a fairly big um, area to capture uh, the sun. Uh, they're nicely sheltered from the wind, so everything warms up really nicely in there. I don't often fleece them, um, just because I tend to, to grow um, things that, uh, you know, th that are pretty hardy. Obviously, the main advantage of these little low tunnels is that they are tall enough that you can get things like chard in them. Uh, so, yeah, my chard bed will be covered by those. It's about October time normally, I think, I do it. Um, and it's a balancing act between how much you want to water and how much water you can actually capture um, and how early you want to start protecting them. Because definitely from October time, um, the, the plants are definitely going to benefit from that extra protection. Um, so, what else? So then I've got coal frames. Now I love the coal frames and the, what I particularly like about them is that it's super easy to take the lids off them in spring and just store the lids. The lids that just go at the back of the polytunnel here. Um, and I've got lots of them. So I, I don't know, maybe probably eight coal frames, something like that. Um, and so they just convert into a raised bed uh, in you know, two minutes. And you know, if you do you know, you have a cold spell, you can just pop the lids back on again. And actually sometimes the lids, you know, I do actually put the lids on sometimes in summer because I can just put um, uh, a net over them and, uh, and that just provides some shade because, oh, just plain going over. Yeah, sometimes you just need some shade from the sun uh, and they, uh, you know, so they, they work really well like that. And obviously in summer we're not getting any rain often. I mean, this summer's been ridiculous, hasn't it, for rain, but uh, most summers we're not getting any rain. So actually having a cover on doesn't really make any difference. Uh, actually, it's just because um, you're not, yeah, there's no rain, um, but they are shading. So what else have we got? So in winter, the next thing I use are my um, little netted frames. Now, those netted frames in summer, again, are fantastic for shade. And they do kind of keep the moths out as well. And the moths often lay eggs and they, you know, they turn into grubs and those grubs often cut worms and things will eat the roots uh, of lots of the veg, particularly salads. Um, and so that's a real pain. So those little mesh covers do that. So they're great for shade. In winter, they're useful as well. Now I thought light levels in winter would be so low that using a little mesh cover would drop the light levels quite dramatically and things just wouldn't grow very well in there. Now that I found is not the case for corn salad, uh, which is also called lamb's lettuce, uh, miner's lettuce, which is also called claytonia, and salad rocket. All of those things seem to thrive under little mesh covers. And the mesh covers provide a few advantages. So the first thing that they do is that they obviously cut down the wind a bit. Now, not, it's not huge, because still plenty of ventilation going through there, and still you can see them rocking around, no problem. Um, but it does just take the edge off the wind. So I don't know, you know, I can't quantify it, but I would say, you know, 10, 15%. And sometimes that makes a big difference. Second thing is hail. So they do stop the hail and the snow, and that's really useful as well. Um, and the rain that, you know, obviously the rain drips through, but 
it's not coming at full force so they don't get quite as much of a battering from you know the rain on a really windy day uh, and that seems to have you know those three benefits seem to far outweigh the reduction in light levels in fact i you know they, the plants always grow stronger and look healthier under those little mesh covers so i actually quite like them now and use them consistently um, to protect those crops now the net that i use is just the cheapest you can get it's just scaffold netting uh, and that is not really good enough to protect brassicas from anything other than the cabbage white butterfly so there's you know cabbage aphid and white fly and stuff like that will still get in there um, and you know I actually find brassicas generally do better not under those little uh, low tunnels um, so and then we've just come down to fleece now I always pretty much use fleece in a supplementary fashion um, I don't generally lay it out onto uh, beds just on its own I find it's just too much hassle um, holding it down and taking it up on windy days to harvest and then putting it down again and it's blowing all over the place uh, and it doesn't last very long because the, the st at least the stuff I buy um, you know only lasts a couple of years before it just disintegrates because of UV uh, exposure um, it rips it's just I, I just don't like it very much uh, there are a few times I use it so I use it in the polytunnels on a really cold day like sort of beast from the east scenario if you, uh, last year, the, year before, the year before last um, I used it um, uh, everywhere so I, I did put some down in my little low tunnels um, and that's the advantage of these tunnels both the low tunnels and the uh, coal frames and the mesh tunnels that it's you can just pop your bit of fleece over and then close the lid and the frame just holds the fleece down so you don't have to faff around at all with you know bits of wood or um, pegs or anything like that and again it's so it's super easy then to harvest because you just open the lid put your fleece in a bucket uh, a dry bucket um, to store it so it doesn't blow away do your harvest lay it out again close the lid yeah, so it's so quick and easy. Um, when I really like it though is kind of March time on the salad beds uh, because then I can put my salads out under just the mesh covers and again I was surprised that salads even in March and April grow absolutely fine under mesh under fleece so I was really surprised about that and you know the quality uh, last year this year was really fantastic of the lettuces growing that way so I've been really delighted by that and uh, and but basically by the time they get to harvest size then you can just take the fleece off because uh, obviously it's kind of late April May time and and that's fine for lettuces on their own um, and the other time I'll use fleece is uh, when I'm starting early really early brassicas uh, and again I'll often start those under one of my hoop tunnels uh, my, my little low tunnels uh, and that allows those brassicas to get an early start and I'm trying to get what am I trying to get an early start of things that I need in the hungry gap so what I find is by the time we get to April May I've really not got many good quality brassicas left got a few well I've got some purple sprouting broccoli but the kales are pretty much all going to seed uh, so I'm not getting fantastic leaves off those obviously we're eating the, um, the well, what you call them seed heads florex um, I am getting some cabbages and things like that but we really like to have some carvalho nero and some uh, uh, curdy kales and things like that so I start some off in um, late February and then I plant those out in the ground in March under protection uh, and by May um, I've got them I've got my clumps of sprouts growing really strongly that I do that with uh, and as I say my Carvalho Nero and my dazzling blue kale and things like that so we get a nice continuity of kales so yeah so what else let me just maybe think a little bit more that in the uh, what else will start early under protection so obviously I've got I'm growing 
all my spinaches, all my lettuces, all my salad rocket. Um, I'll do some of my spring onions uh, in a cold frame. I've got some nice deep cold frames and I generally interplant those with the lettuces. Um, and then I will start my spring lettuces in probably January, February time. Sometimes I'll, I'll even, I've even started them in December. And so the little tiny plants that get planted. So if I've got a bed sp coming spare, empty, I'll even put them in uh, at the beginning of December. Uh, and then they'll just concentrate. They won't put on much leaf growth. They'll be little tiny plants, nice and stocky. Um, and they'll put on root growth over winter. Uh, and then they'll grow into lovely um, things like winter gem, uh, a nice crunchy uh, green lettuce and winter density again, planted late. Not, we're not going to eat them until March, April time, but you know, they do really well in, in there. And because I'm just leaving them for such a long time, that's a great time to put some spring onions in with them because they'll just grow and to, up to fully mature hearted lettuces. And at the same time, I'm picking those hearted lettuces and picking the spring onions to go with them. So that works really nicely. Radishes are fantastic. Uh, I often put radishes in uh, sort of late January. So I'll start them in module trays at home. Uh, late January, early February, I'll start putting those in the coal frames. Again, nice stocky little plants. Um, and yeah, they'll do really well. Uh, and so, you know, we're sort of eating uh, radishes um, end of March, early April sort of time. So that's really nice. Um, and generally I'll keep using all of these protection mechanisms all the way until about June, because even some of my tender stuff, things like uh, New Zealand spinach, uh, which I want sort of as, as a mature plant at the beginning of June, start harvesting that, it really needs protection. Um, it's very tender so although frost will kill it, it, it you know it doesn't need a frost to set its growth back um, and it's the same with things like um, golden purslane and stuff like that uh, it just really needs as much protection as you can give it uh, until it's really warm um, so I think I'm pretty much out. I'm just going to pause this now and have a quick think. Yeah, beetroot. Um, I, I like to start some beetroot in February. Obviously, I'm starting onions in February. Um, and so all those uh, do really well in the cold frames. Uh, and again, you're not really protecting so much from the cold, just, just the wind um, and the rain and the hail and snow. Um, and so you can leave them fairly vented. And, and this whole sort of topic about ventilation is covered in another video. And it is quite important because it's quite tricky to vent uh, and not kind of expose yourself to think structures being damaged in the wind. Uh, so I've kind of designed, it's very windy here, um, I've designed all of my structures so that they're really strong and robust when vented um, so that I can kind of leave them open um, even when it's quite windy. And, uh, and that just means less trips down to the plot to open and close things. I can just sort of set it up and then leave it for two or three days until the wind direction changes and then come back and adjust and just keep on going through that cycle. Um, so I, I'd love some feedback on whether this is useful and please ask questions because it's really difficult to just sit here and think about everything that I know that I think might be useful just off the top of my head without kind of being in discussion. Um, I'm so used to discussing things and so just talking to a camera is uh, a bit alien to me. Um, so yeah, let's get some discussion going in the comments about people's favourite ways of protecting things and which things really benefit from it and whether, you know, really where the best bang for the book is because, you know, you can put a lot of effort into protecting something and really not get a particularly amazing harvest out of it. Um, and, and that can be quite discouraging. And I've definitely had that with varieties of lettuce that, that are now growing the polytunnel and they grow fine, like Navara, but outside, well, sorry, not outside, but in the cold frame, it's just that bit too cold for them and that bit too damp for them. Um, and they just, you know, I've lost probably 50% of the plants by the time we get to uh, early spring. 
uh, and as I say that's quite disheartening nobody likes to lose plants um, and yeah so it's so I'm kind of adjusted a lot of what I grow to try and make sure that anything I'm growing is successful oh there's a couple of things I should mention now just as the top of my head now uh, first one is I'm growing this year quite a bit of um, the watermelon radish now I grew it last year and I wanted it for the radish and I didn't get any radishes <laughs> so that was a bit of a disappointment but then I found that the leaves grow really strong all the way through winter uh, and they're not bothered at all by frost and things like that I had to grow them in a cold frame so they're getting some protection um, and so I harvested those into my smoothie mixes all the way through winter so that worked really nicely um, and this year I'm growing uh, a baby leaf kale red ruble um, and we've used that extensively in the salads and that's been really nice um, so that's really hardy as well so, well I'm hoping it is with it being a kale so I'm going to grow that in one of the cold frames because you're harvesting it when it's about this big in fact you could harvest it smaller than that but I'm harvesting it when it's about that big and again that's really nice for the smoothie mixes and for the salads so there's a few new things that I'm doing as well as all the other things that I've talked about um so yeah and if you're interested in the things that i'm growing here uh definitely take a look at my playlists because i've got a playlist which has got my sewing and growing guide for every month uh, and so that shows you what i'm sewing and the things that i planted last month uh, that are growing so it shows you the progress on those uh, I've definitely got quite a few things about self-sufficiency which cover all the issues around uh, being self-sufficient 365 days a year in veg which we are um, and and some of the trickier crops I find to be self-sufficient in like carrots uh, probably one of the most difficult that I found um, although I do manage it just about but it's a bit of a struggle um, and what other and I've got a playlist all about my hoop tunnels and coal frames and how I made them, how I use them and all that and the video playlist all about the polytunnel and again what I grow in the polytunnel and my review of the polytunnel and things like that and another video uh, in the coal, probably in the coal frame, poly, uh, coal frame playlist uh, which talks about the pros and cons of coal frames and hoop tunnels and polytunnels and things like that uh, which kind of goes into some more detail, uh, not just about winter. Um, so with that, I'll leave it on with your lives and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.